What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So we have a new uh, Territory Wars Omicron, and I kind of want to talk about it. Um, we have this new Death Trooper Peridia from the Ahsoka show. Um, I think the artwork looks amazing. I think the animation is looking better. So CG's art team is definitely uh, stepping up their game. I have some mixed feelings about this kit. Um, I was really hoping for an improvement to Dark Trooper Moff Gideon's team because, in my opinion, I think for how good of a character he is i think his team is super underwhelming and it doesn't look like any of the new imperial remnant characters are going to be going on the dark gideon team um i know some people are doing it right now with night trooper because he has the datacron i think that's kind of the exception but um it sounds like cg is wanting us to create two different teams while you know dipping their hand in the same cookie jar um that being the night sister faction so let's take a look at it i think the kit's really good but like i said i have some mixed feelings because it's not what i was hoping for but at the same time they're doing something very interesting with the omicron so um let's get started okay so he's gonna be a attacker imperial remnant night nice sister dark side that's not really a surprise there we're gonna skip past all this you, you are gonna need him for gl so good r7 so that's not a that should be a no-brainer i mean we all know how gls work these days uh you kind of need all the marquees for them so uh Let's take a look at his uh, kit. Uh, I like the animations. I like the fact that he's got some recoil to his uh, um, his basic here. You know, he's just pretty much a limp zombie, so he's not a you know, he doesn't have that stock um, up against the shoulder or anything like that. So it looks cool. I like the little details like that. Um, so this is really interesting here. Um, if you see right here at the bottom, it says uh, while in Territory Wars, and if he has his Omi, uh, there's a different effect. So and you're gonna you're gonna notice that throughout the kit. So his uh, basic does uh, physical damage to the target enemy with a 40% chance to inflict a stack of Blight. Blight's the new mechanic that they introduced with the Night Trooper. They already said that he uh, that the Death Trooper is going to interact with Blight as well. I believe Captain Enoch is going to have a debuff called Decay. So I have no idea how that's going to interact uh, with Blight. Um, or if it's going to be its own separate debuff. But uh, we're going to have to wait because I'm pretty sure the next Marquis is going to be the Great Mothers. And then they'll give us Enoch in a, you know probably like three weeks from now, maybe four weeks. Uh, which can't be dispelled until the end of the encounter. Um, if the target enemy already had a uh, had Blight, uh, this attack deals double damage. If this attack scores a critical hit, all Imperial Remnant allies gain offense up for one turn. That's good, um, because this faction looks like, just from the two characters we have right now, um, or not faction, I should say team, it looks like they're going to be doing a lot of damage. Um, otherwise, Death Trooper gains crit chance up for one turn, so that pretty much means the next time you should land that uh, that critical hit for the offense up. While in TW, uh, if they have their Omi activated, which they should, um, if they're in TW, I suppose, uh, gain five stacks of Siphon when this ability is used. So, two things I like about this ability. Um, it doesn't have to be on his turn, and he does Siphon crit damage. So, I'm, I'm really curious to see you know now that we're getting more characters with siphon i think the only characters we have right now with siphon is slkr we have because he does damage after does potency and then what's the other one oh god there's one more oh yeah bane bane does health so he's gonna siphon a crit damage which is pretty interesting um i'm really curious to see how uh how high uh, his crit damage is gonna be so we're probably gonna monitor crit damage and i'm assuming maybe health or potency we'll see I love this animation, by the way. I think this is really cool. I like the whole uh, green blood splatter effect. Um, kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, uh, House of the Dead arcade games. But um, really cool animation. And this ability is kind of nuts, too. So let's go ahead and read it. Deal physical damage to the target enemy and inflict blight, which can't be copied or dispelled until the end of the encounter. If the target enemy already had blight, inflict two stacks of damage over time for two turns and remove 5% turn meter from the target enemy three times. So it's going to be three individual instances of turn meter removal. And again, that's teasing, you know, Dark Gideon, but I'm telling you guys, we're not going to be using Dark Gideon and these uh, new characters at the same time. If this ability uh, takes an enemy below 10% health, 10% health instantly defeat them. Um, so if, I'm really hoping there's going to be some sort of mechanic to ignore protection. I think that would be wild if like Enoch does that, or I don't know what Decay does, but... You know, maybe there's going to be some ignore protection mechanic because that would make this ability just really, really good. If this ability defeats an enemy, um, Death Trooper Peridia gains a bonus turn and the cooldown of this ability is reset. Which means he can pretty much just 
bite everybody all the time. I think it's super, super cool. Um, sounds like it's going to be a really fun kit if it works the way I'm thinking it's going to work. Now, this is where you actually apply the Omicron. Um, while in Territory Wars, the Fall Allies are Imperial Remnant or Night Sisters. Um, it's kind of interesting. Like I said, we're kind of dipping our hand in the same cookie jar. We're, we're trying to build a new Night Sister team with, uh, um, you know, Morgan Elsbeth and all the leftover sisters like Spirit and Acolyte. And now we're trying to build a second one, apparently. Um, but we only have three characters for this team. We have Enoch, Death Trooper, and Night Trooper. So we'll see what happens. I don't know if you're just going to be borrowing or if there's going to be one less Night Sister. I don't know. But, uh, uh, maybe we'll get more Imperial Remnants. Or maybe Dark Trooper will work on this team somehow because no one's really using him. I don't know. But Death Trooper Pretty siphons uh, crit damage from the target enemy. Um, which cannot be resisted. So anytime uh, he uses this ability, he is going to be siphoning uh, crit damage. Which is, you know, a, kind of a big deal. Um, if this ability takes an enemy below 20% health, so now your threshold is doubled. So um, think of it like Savage. You know, like Savage has those thresholds where like... You, when you can instant kill someone, and then when you apply the Omi, the threshold's even bigger. Same thing here. So we have a 20% threshold here. Instantly defeat them. If the target already had Blight, inflict Armor Shred until the end of the battle. So, that's already worth it. I mean, like I said, like I said th this Omi is already transforming this character and kind of giving him a different kit. Um, like I said, it, we're just really going to have to see if the team is good or not. Siphoning in percentage of crit damage equal to this unit's siphon until the end of the encounter, and the target loses that much crit damage stacking, excluding raid bosses and GLs. So, taking away their crit damage, um, it's gonna be interesting. I really like this animation too. I think this one is hilarious. Uh, the fact that he is running in the same direction that he's throwing his grenade is already funny, but the fact that it knocks him back and he's on the ground for like a second is, is pretty good. Um, Again, I think they're stepping up their game with their animations because uh, this is, I think this is great. I think it's, it's unique, it's funny, I like it. All right, deal physical damage to all enemies and inflict offense down to nasty on for two turns. Um, that's already really good. If the ally leader in, in the leader slot is an Imperial Remnant support, dispel all buffs from all enemies. So here's the thing, um, you know, Dark Trooper Mop getting a tank, uh, so we can't use him. You guys are probably thinking, well, OG getting support. Well, here's the thing. If we use OG Gideon in the leader slot, uh, his lead, I believe, does like almost nothing for these characters because none of these characters are A, Empire, and B, they're not Imperial Troopers, which, you know, probably for balancing purposes. Um, so again, we really don't know um, what Enoch's going to look like, but I mean, it's pretty much Enoch. If the target enemy already had Blight, inflict a stack of Blight, which can't be copied or dispelled on a random enemy that doesn't already have it until the end of the encounter. All allies gain offense up and speed up for two turns. So we have two different ways to get offense up. That's really good. That's really, really good. Um, that just shows that this character is, I mean, he's an attacker, but I mean, he's going to be pumping up the whole team, including himself. So I'd imagine we're going to get some pretty high damage numbers from this character. While in Territory Wars of Death Trooper Peridia has his Omi activated, um, this ability deals additional damage equal to 40% of his crit damage, and Death Trooper Peridia gains 10 stacks of Siphon for each debuff inflicted by this ability. So, that's kind of crazy. 10 stacks for each debuff inflicted. So we're already gonna be inflicting um, 10, uh, 10 debuffs um, from the first sentence. It's gonna be five offense down, five tenacity down. And then we're also gonna be inflicting one stack of blight. So total, um, it's gonna be what, 110? Is it 110 or 120? No, it's 110. Yeah, we're going to get 110 stacks of Siphon, I believe, if I did my math correctly. Um, which is going to be nuts, because then you were... I, I mean, this grenade is essentially going to be taking away almost all your opponent's crit damage. away. Like, we're just going to take it all away, because the Siphon is on the target. Um, which is going to be nuts. And then, obviously, we're going to have a... The next time this ability comes off cooldown, which is on a cooldown of 3, which is great. Not a long cooldown. Um... 40% of his crit damage, which is going to be just like, this grenade is going to just start doing so much damage every time you throw it. So I really can't wait to see what the numbers are going to look like. Um, obviously, we're going to crit damage set, crit damage primary in the triangle. Um, health, maybe potency, but we'll see. Probably potency. You really want to inflict these debuffs. So he just straight up gives himself 25 speed. Um, Imperial Remnant allies have 35% crit chance, which is great. And offense. That's... I don't think they need the offense because... There's so many ways, so many routes to get offense up. Um, Night Trooper, I believe, stacks offense with uh, the amount of Blight that's out. Um, 
And the Night Sister allies have 30% max health and protection. I mean, this is kind of a wild unique if you think about it. Like, you're giving your whole team, like, I'm, assume, I'm talking about Enoch as well, crit chance, offense, max health, and max protection. I mean, this almost reads like a mini leadership, in my opinion, but I mean, to each his own. If the ally in the leader slot is not an Imperial Remnant tank, specifically targeting a Dark Gideon, uh, whenever an Imperial Remnant ally is dazed, stunned, sho stunned, shocked, or inflicted with speed down, that's those are all really strong debuffs. Um, all Imperial Remnant allies gain uh, 15 speed stacking, uh, max uh, 60 for the rest of the battle. So, again, uh, kind of reads like a lead, but you know it's not. So I'm really curious to see what Enoch does. Whenever an Imperial Remnant ally is critically hit, remove 3% turn meter from all enemies. Um, that is insane. Like, that's really good. That reminds me of, like, Stormtroopers. Um, I think Stormtroopers are unique where while Stormtrooper is taunting, you remove 10% TM from all enemies. There's, like, a chance to do it. But whenever any ally is critically hit, uh, Imperial Remnant, remove 3% turn meter from all enemies. The Trooper Pretty gains 5% turn meter stacking. Um, why does it say stacking? I guess, I, guess you, I guess you do have to include it. For each stack of Blight inflicted on an enemy. So... Um, I'm not sure how quickly you can get Blight out. I mean, obviously with the Datacron right now, it's, it kind of just spreads like wildfire, but we'll see how Enoch interacts with Blight. But uh, Dead Trooper Pridia looks really good. Um, like I said, I'm I'm happy that they're experimenting new ways to use Omicrons. Um, one of the things I was worried about with this faction was, or this team, I shouldn't say the faction, the team is that there's been so many Gakomis lately, and for a TW Omicron to be effective, in my opinion... Um, it really needs to be on a, like a lead or unique. Um, it really does because you have you have character you have like factions like the Tuscans for example, where the Omicron is on Tuscan Warrior, and while it transforms the Tuscan Warrior, makes the Tuscan Warrior a little bit better, uh, it doesn't do anything for the team. So when you get these uh, Omicrons that are on like an, a special ability or something like that, um, I get a little worried because then it makes me feel like the team is not going to be relevant. And I'm not sure why CG. I'm hoping Enoch is going to be TW. Obviously, you guys know I'm biased. I hope Enoch is going to be TW, um, just because I don't think this Omi transforms the team, in my opinion. I don't. I mean, obviously it transforms the character, um, and who knows? Maybe the team will be so good that this is enough. This is enough to transform the team in TW. Is just this one Omi, but I really think that uh, um, I obviously like th this team. There's, these characters are not going to work with. Um, Dark Trooper Moff Gideon. In my opinion, uh, Dark Trooper Moff Gideon is... I, I think he's a really good character, but his team sucks. Um, it's super underwhelming Territory Wars team. And for the most... And the, the reason for that is just, like, mostly... Like I said, the team doesn't do anything. Um, outside of Death Trooper and Scout, like, we don't need a second tank. Dark Trooper Moff Gideon is your tank. Um, OG Gideon does nothing on the team. Um, I mean, he calls everyone to assist, takes with the TM, I get that, but, like... Beyond that, he doesn't do anything. Um, that team always feels like, outside of Death Trooper, no one's doing damage on the team. Scout will eventually ramp and do enough damage at, towards the end of the battle. But, like, in terms of, like, urgency, like, turn one, turn two, there kind of is none. Other than them just stripping your turn meter away and, you know, nerfing your damage. But if they're not doing any damage to you, there's no real threat. I think Trench is a far superior team uh, for Territory Wars. I think Trench is a much better design team overall, but... Yeah, so these two characters are not going to be with Dark Trooper Moff Gideon, unfortunately, because I was really hoping that these were kind of going to be, like, not lifters, but options to make that team just a little bit more threatening on the board. Um, I mean, I'm not saying they're completely useless, but I I'm, I'm not a fan of the team. I'm really not. I'm not a fan of the team. Um, you throw Malgus at it in either GAC or TW, Malgus will beat it. Like, just, like, without, you know, <laughs> without a uh, breaking a sweat, it's... It's pretty sad, but um, I'm looking forward to seeing Enoch. Like I'm really crossing my fingers and hoping that uh, you know Decay is going to do something here with like ignoring protection. Um, that way we can get to this bite a lot uh, faster because if uh, that's kind of, I feel like it's kind of what we need here. Um, we need some way to make this ability like scary. So uh, hopefully Decay does something like that. Like I said, we're probably going to get the Great Mothers next. Um, I have no idea what the team is going to be for 5v5. Like, I really know. And obviously, in threes, this might be a pretty good team for threes. Like, I'm not going to lie. This this might be a good little trio here, like these two guys in Enoch. But for fives, I mean, they haven't announced any other new Imperial Remnant characters. 
So maybe we're just gonna throw two random Night Sisters. Um, you know, and they already said Enoch's gonna be support, so we also don't have a tank for this team. That's another thing to keep in mind. Um, I mean, they all they all are Night Sisters, so maybe maybe put Morgan Elizabeth on this team and the Great Mothers, and that's your team. But I don't know. We'll see. But anyways, I just want to talk about the day. I know it's a TW on me. Um, but, um, yeah, guys, I would hold off on this one for a little bit. I think it's really good. I think eventually we're all going to apply it. Like I said, we just got to wait for uh, Enoch's kit to come out. And we got to figure out um, the rest of the squad. And like I said, if the Great Mother's going to be on this team, we'll get, we got to see what they do too. But I think they're going to be a leader. So I'm not sure how this is going to work. But we'll see. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you have a good one. And I'll see you next time.